Good morning, everyone, and welcome to service this morning. If you, those of y'all that's here, and those that's watching on Facebook, and, or maybe listening on the uh, radio, we thank y'all for tuning in this morning as we begin the service this morning. We'll begin uh, just letting you know the front restroom is still closed. It should be open up Wednesday. We found as I was going through this, okay, as I was going through this, we found... Uh, some plumbing leaks and stuff that we had to fix, which was a good thing that we're doing this because we have found some leaks that we didn't know we had. But uh, so we're getting that fixed too. Yes, sir. Yes, we do have a hot water fix. That was one thing we got all that fixed. So <laughs> praise the Lord for that. But the backs, the backs is open now. Like I say, we. I think they decided to go ahead and paint them while all the stuff was out of them too. So, but these should be back going Wednesday, unforeseeing any, any other circumstances. The ones up front, and we'll be finishing up the backs. Maybe everything will be ready to go by next Sunday. Thank you all for your patience. But uh, like anything else, we got to keep things up. You know, just like our houses and, and church. You know, it's up to us to keep it up. You know, to make for each and every one of us as we come. But well, we thank you all for your patience. Uh, this is the last Sunday in the books of toward the end of classes. So we'll be giving out the, uh, passing around. I'll put them somewhere. I don't know how she'll do it somewhere. To <laughs> pass them out probably. Uh, the new Sunday school books for uh, next, beginning next week. Uh, as Brother John will be back with us next week teaching. He'll start the summer quarter off. This will be the last quarter for the year. You know, our quarter begins in uh, September, I think that's the turnover around September. So that's be the last quarter for the year, the summer quarter, and we'll begin a new quarter to September. So y'all just be in prayer for everything. So as we begin Sunday school, we go before the Lord in prayer. Let's still remember uh, the many requests, the Puckett family, Sarah Jeff Coat, Charles Power, Linda Morris, surgery she has coming up, uh, Donnie Fulmer, his surgery, uh, June the 10th, looked like they may have scheduled his. Uh, Ain't Opal, continue to lift her up in prayer. Uh, Sue's family, continue to remember them. Mark Morrow, uh, Clifford Enlo, continue to remember him. Tony and Susan Phillips, uh, continue to remember Pat Harden as she's 
overcoming this uh, COVID. Uh, Tiffany, Tiffany McGill, she uh, has been diagnosed with COVID. I don't know if well long she is with it, but y'all remember her? She's in serious condition. Yes, so y'all remember them and that family. Uh, Jack Garrison, Mildred Garrison, Sister Mildred, y'all continue to remember her. Uh, Alma War Warnock, Jean, and Alma continue to remember them. Travis Durant, uh, Robus Bellows, it looks like Mike, uh, Faith Rogers family, Edith Sin, Clive Tyler, Karen Jordan, Dale Hudson, uh, Tamara, y'all remember all those requests, uh, continue to remember everything that's going on. If you don't know with this situation that happened in Minneapolis, it's spreading all over the nation, it looks like. Uh, so y'all be in prayer for all that, continue to be in prayer for the, the epidemic that's out there, all those that's hospitalized, all those that's lost, ones with it. Uh, as I said, uh, one thing about this, just remember one thing about the COVID-19. If you do get down with it and get in the hospital, nobody can come and see you. Amen. I heard that from a guy at work that was diagnosed with it. He got sick with it. Then his wife and then his daughter, who was 25, she's the one that wound up in the hospital for over 12 days. Five days in ICU or on a ventilator. The hardest thing he said for him through the whole thing was he couldn't go see his wife or his daughter. His wife was in the hospital also. So just imagine, some of these people that's lost their lives, they've done it by themselves. The family couldn't be there with them. But God was there. But God was there. Yes, God is there. God is there, there with you. If you're a Christian, you can rest assured he's there with you. But it's still... Scary. Yes. you all alone. I mean, you all alone. That's the thing. You are all alone except for God. And, and, and it's just, that's, that's one of the scary things. That's just what I want to say right now. I'm not telling anyone to, to, to go crazy. I'm not telling, I'm just telling everyone to, to use wisdom. That's the basic thing, to use wisdom. And just like this, this thing that's going on over there, we got rights and they were rapping in Columbia yesterday. They've been in Atlanta. What South Carolina had to do with it, I don't know, but it's just, if it's evil, it spreads like sin. Remember that. Bad things spread and they spread. Usually it's not good people. There's nothing wrong with people that protest. It's a, it's a constitutional right, but they're supposed to do it peacefully, peacefully and in the right way. There's nothing wrong with that. But when you're going and breaking in and looting places and burning fire trucks, what we're going to do if we burn all the fire trucks? If a fire actually does break out in your home, who's going to come and put it out? I mean, things like that to me just makes no sense. So we really need to pray about things like that, that people open up. So just remember all that in prayer, all the requests, all the special requests, all these that's working out during this time, everything that's going on in this nation. It seems like it's one thing after another. Uh, today is Pentecost Sunday. This is one of the, the feasts that everybody had to go to Jerusalem for. And when you start reading the Bible, feast is a thing. A lot of things happen on feast. Amen. Jesus Christ came on Passover. He arose on first fruits. The Holy Ghost fell on Pentecost. You know what will be the next one? Tabernacles. In the fall. You know what's coming after that? Feast of Trumpets. Tabernacles was the other feast everybody had to go to Jerusalem for. I'm just saying, I'm not saying when Jesus Christ is coming back, I don't know, but it seems like it's a lot of things is tied into these feasts, the Jewish feasts when Christ comes. So just remember that. It could tie into one of them sometime down the road. I don't know, may may not. I'm just telling you, people need to wake up and be aware with everything that's going on that... I mean, Jesus Christ is coming back. 
He said things like this was going to happen. He said there would be pestilence in the end of days. He said there would be real wars and rumors of real wars. What is this? What is these rights and things that's going on? But us as the United States of America, right, warring within ourselves, warring against one another. And then if they have to call out our military, we already got strong tensions with us in China, if you've been watching the news. So I'm just telling you, I believe this is a strong, this is the strongest wake up call I believe I've seen in my lifetime. Amen. People had better wake up. Jesus Christ is coming back. Amen. Don't know when. Is, is this the sign that he's going to be this? I don't know when. I, and I'm not saying, I'm trying to say that. I'm just saying people need to wake up. Us as Christians, we need to wake up and spread the gospel. That's what Pentecost was about. Us receiving the Holy Spirit so we could spread the gospel and get it out there. So, as I said, let's remember all these requests. Let's remember everything that's going on in our nations, the nations around us. Uh, just be in prayer for it all or any requests that we need to... I remember that request this morning. Uh, I remember Chris and her family, and I have a special request. Yes, continue to remember Chris and her family. It's going on. I pray for boy. Son Travis, they tested negative. He did. Uh, Praise the Lord. That's great. We just want to, to praise the Lord for that. Uh, Tim, this Tamara that, that's on the pray, um, prayer request. She was hit by an 18 wheeler and she mm. went through uh, like eight hours of surgery yesterday. She's in critical condition and uh, she lives in another state, but she needs prayers desperately. Yes, y'all remember that, that request also. And all those requests. Y'all just remember this morning. Any other the uplifting of hands this morning? Let's all just go before the Lord at this time. Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord, to praise and honor you. Lord, we know that you're the awesome, almighty God, and that you are in control of all things. We know, Lord Jesus, that you can do all things, Lord Jesus. That nothing catches you unaware, Lord. That you are responsive to the prayers of your children this morning, Lord. So as we call out to you this morning, Lord, we ask that you would move according to your will upon these requests, Lord. If it's divine healing, Lord, we ask that you would move upon them with that divine healing. If they sick in body, Lord, just reach down and touch them and minister to them today, Lord. If it's physical, Lord, just touch and minister to them, Lord. I ask, Lord, if it's spiritual, that you would touch them this morning. Lord, if it's if it's difficulties with the economy, if it's worry and stress that they're facing this morning, Lord, I ask that you would give them that peace that only you can give. So I ask, Lord, that you would just move upon all these requests, Lord. I ask, Lord, as I lift, lift them all up to you, as you touch their bodies, whether you touch them physically, spiritually, Lord, that if they lost this morning, you draw them unto you and save their souls. I ask, Lord, that you would reach out to them, Lord, wherever they may be. Reach out to our lost loved ones, Lord, wherever they may be, Lord. And all this that's going on in our nation, Lord, and the other nations, Lord, with all these rights, you know, and things that's going on, Lord, I ask that you would move upon them, Lord, that you would help people to wake up and realize, Lord Jesus, that this ain't the answer to the problem, that you the answer to the problem, that if we trust in you, that you'll see us through it all. So just touch and move upon all these things that's going on. Look after all the, the workers, Lord, that's working out in the fields with this pandemic that's going on, Lord. I ask that you would continue to, to look after them and keep them and guide them in your grace in all these requests. Now I ask, Lord, that you would touch today, Lord, as we gather in your house, all those that's here today, Lord, and those that's watching, Lord, I ask that you would minister to them today in a mighty way, that you would reach out to them, Lord, and minister to them, Lord, through your word, through your Sunday school lesson, Lord, through the songs that sung today, Lord, and Lord, through the preaching of your word, Lord, is going to lead me to your message. Just let that special anointing be upon him, Lord, that it'll reach out and move and minister in a mighty way. And Lord, we'll just continue to praise you and honor you as we give you all glory and honor for everything you've done and everything we know you're going to do. In Jesus' name, we ask it all. Amen. 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 Yes. Uh, we begin this morning before I did, I'll just mention we will be having next Sunday night the graduation thing here in the auditorium. And those that's graduating in the immediate family. They got five that first time. They can have five people. I 
they, they were saying five people were going by the guidelines. So if you and your immediate family, y'all been around one another, y'all can go over to Fellowship Hall. They'll have some pizza or something for you over there. Uh, so, but y'all need to stay at your table because this is this is the guidelines. That's what I'm saying. This is your social distancing. This is your table, and and do that. We're not. Being mean, we're not being harsh. We're just trying to give y'all the best that we can under the conditions that we're doing. But, you know, the rest of us, you know, we'll just go on home. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't that we don't love you and things like that. But this is a, we'll you know, this is this is something we've never faced before as a church. I don't think any church has faced this and things like that where, you know, they ain't even have schools set up if they want to put um, yeah. envelopes there. We'll have boxes set up for each one. If you day. if you're bringing something for them, they will have a box for them out here that you can just drop it in uh, for them for next week. But they'll have that back there for you know for for the graduates and the family there. So we're just trying to do the best we can. That's something that they thought of, we wasn't going to do the food, we thought about this, there's a lot of things they thought about, but they thought this may be the best way to go, so y'all just pray for that, and, and like I say, we live in, in a time and age, this is new to us, Amen. okay, I mean, if we make a wrong decision, we apologize, but we, we try to pray about everything we do, well, we do pray about, I pray about pretty much everything. Decision. If Brother Lee calls up and asks me a question, and I try to pray about it, or he doesn't been praying about it. Sometimes I've been praying about it, and he calls me up and asks me something I've been thinking about. It's kind of weird, but <laughs> I just say that's God, you know. But that's that's just God. I, I take it, you know, God just already, you know, he'll say, "Well, this is." I say, "You know, I've been thinking, thinking, you know." And, and we'll talk, and that, you know, may happen with some some of the rest of y'all when he talks. I don't know, but it's just that. This is new to us, and we're trying to do the best. I'm not trying to take up all Sundays. I'm just trying to say this is what we've decided, you know, that we could we can do to honor our graduates because we really want to do that. And it is it is different, even graduation. You know, I think they can't put about two, three people go to graduation, two. And what Lee said, two, and that's, uh, you know, at Red Spring Manetta, they used to be about 10 or 15 could go or something in the, in the past few years, you know. Uh, so, but y'all just be in prayer for all of this. Yes, Amen. that's what I say. I mean, it's hard times for everybody. There's a lot of things, I mean, that's going on. Vacations, you know, has been shut down. I mean, that's what we're talking about the other day, man, Tina, you know. We pretty much shut down vacations for this year, unless it's toward the end of the year. We just we might do a day trip here or there, but as far as uh, we just really think it's not in our best interest to go spend a night somewhere, but we don't. We just don't know. I'm not in a panic phase. I'm just telling you my. I mean, using wisdom. I'm using my wisdom. This is this is mine and her wisdom talking with one another. What we want to do in protection of our our children and all, you know, and that's. The, you know, so, but with all that said and done, just remember that we'll probably announce it again. I just wanted to announce it here in case anybody leaves after Sunday school, they would know uh, kind of what's going on, and uh, it's probably on the board. But uh, we'll be getting the lessons. As I, as I said earlier, this is Pentecost Sunday. Pentecost basically uh, means 50 days. This is 50 days after Easter. Pentecost, the, the Feast of Pentecost was, served, was, was celebrated seven weeks after Passover. You know, and that's, that was when the feast happened. You know, and that's what I said. This was a, another feast. Pentecost was a feast that all the Jewish males had to go to Jerusalem on. Pentecost, Passover, and uh, as I said earlier, Tabernacles. The Feast of Tabernacles, which happens... It's like a, a harvest feast in October, September, October frame, time frame. But this was one everybody had to go there. Just like Passover. Everybody was there. Jerusalem was packed full the day that Jesus died upon the cross. You need to remember that. He died on, on you know, it, it, it was packed full. Amen. That was the day. Passover was the day he was crucified. That's That was it. First fruits is the very first Monday after Passover. 
In other words, Passover is at the end of the week, the first fruits is the next. That's when Jesus rose from the grave. And these were feasts that they had to be there at Jerusalem. So Amen. Pentecost Sunday, Jerusalem was full when the Spirit came. When he fell, Amen. it was full. There was many Jews from all over. They had to come from all around. You know, it's kind of like the census when Jesus was born. Everybody had to go to the home town. You know, it was. But the same thing with, with, with Pentecost. Every all the males had to go to Jerusalem. So they more than likely the families went with them. So they all went. That was a great. It was a week long celebration. Most of them was week long. They started because you know remember when access when the day of Pentecost was fully come. So that means it started ahead, but the day that the actual celebration and things that they actually done. When it had fully come, that's when the Spirit failed. Amen. And so that's what we're talking about today, the Pentecostal experience. And it continues. It wasn't just for them. You'll hear that. Some people say, oh, that was just for them back then. No. The prophecy says it's for you and your children and your children's children. It's for, and we see that it didn't, let, as we look at this lesson today, we'll see that it, you know, we're not going to look at the exact date thing that it happened, but about a few months after that, we'll see how it moved from Jerusalem to Samaria. Then about two to three years after that, we'll see how it moved to the Gentiles. Now, you know, the Samaritans was, as you know, they was, you know, basically the Samaritans, and that's why I want to be, what they call it, not... Uh, Nah, no, it was a. It's got to be the thing of the age. There's some things you just can't say. So the Jews in the Gentiles. In other words, when Israel, Samaria became known, basically Israel. A lot of people referred to Israel when after the nation split, split as Samaria. But Samaria was basically that that area between Galilee and uh, I can't think of the other. Judea, I believe it was between, but basically Samaria was after the, they had fallen to the Assyrians. The Jews in that area began to intermarry with the Assyrians, so we had the Jews despised. And so that's what Samaria was. That's where it was. So basically, it moved from here, first stretched out to the Samaritans. Then about two or three later, it went out to Cornelius' house, the Gentiles. He was a Gentile. He was a Gentile. He was a Roman centurion. He was a, a Gentile, as we say. So it went out to that. And then it was almost 24 years later that it moved, that Paul took it to, uh, the city just went slap out my mind. But Paul took it to Apollos in them, the, 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 uh, yeah, yeah. the, the, Disciples of John, uh, you know, he took it. He took it there. So, as we begin looking at it this morning, that's what we're going to be looking at. As it was, it's, it continues on, and it continues on today. The Holy Spirit, the Pentecostal experience, is here today, and it's a different experience than when you get saved. You get saved, it, you know. It's, it's these is all baptism is a different experience. These is all different experiences that we need to 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 know and understand today. So as we begin to look at the outpourings of the Holy Spirit, you know, as we look at them today, Scripture displays, uh, it's, it's non-discriminatory. It doesn't discriminate against anyone. It's for anyone who accepts Jesus Christ as saving them. The only thing that you have to do before you can receive the baptism in the Holy Ghost or the Pentecostal experience is be regenerated or have a new birth, get saved. Amen. Get saved. As we look at, as we start looking in these lessons today, we'll see you don't have to be baptized to get it. It's you, but the one thing that you have to do to be able to receive the Pentecostal experience or the baptism in the Holy Ghost is to be saved. That's the first step for anything. That's the first step in anything with Jesus. You have to accept Him as Savior and Lord. Once you accept Him as Savior and Lord, the Holy Spirit comes to be with you. He comes to dwell with you, to help lead you and guide you. But this is an experience that helps us to go forward, to move forward, to strengthen us, just like it did with them. 
It says, so as, as we begin here, they're starting up there, and we're starting in like Acts chapter 6, beginning in verse 5. It says, then Philip went down. Now this is right after, if you go back to the end of the chapter before that, you see that's the chapter that Stephen was stoned to death in. At the end of that chapter, you know, it's Stephen. Stephen's dying, if you want to say he's dying. He looks up into heaven. So right after that, Philip leaves. What we need to understand is God's working in all that. God's working in all that. They had got the, the, the Holy Spirit. They had been all of them right there in Jerusalem. They wasn't going nowhere. It wasn't spreading out anywhere. The gospel was just right here in one place. Then persecution fell. And this is what happened. And when it did, with Stephen and it, with Stephen, you know, the, the martyr, it began to spread out because everybody left. If you read, it says, you know, you read on before this, you see that they had left Jerusalem. A lot of them had left except for the apostles like Peter, James, and John. And them. They stayed in Jerusalem, but most of them, like Philip, Philip left. He went to Samaria. But it says as they left and went out because of the persecution, but they continued to preach the gospel. Amen. So God used evil are bad for good. Remember all things God does. It was good in the sense that they moved down and began to spread the word of God to other people. It wasn't good that they were being persecuted. It's never good that a Christian is persecuted. But sometimes persecution brings salvation. Amen. That's what we need to remember. This is what was happening. Because Philip left. He went out and he went to Samaria. It says, then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preach Christ unto them. See, he's, he's branching out. He's branching out to basically uh, the Gentiles or you know, basically half Jew, half uh, Gentiles, what it was. So he goes out and he begins to preach. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake. So they listened to what Philip had to speak. They was listening to what he said and they gave heed to it. They, that means they was listening listening intently to what he was having to say that was beginning to feed upon it the things which philip spake hearing and seeing the miracles which he did so here's philip he wasn't one of the, uh, the remember he was one of the deacons just like stephen was but he begins to preach he was preaching also and speaking the, the word of god and the people begin to hear it they begin to heed to it that's saying you know they begin to to to, to allow it to come in to minister to them uh, hearing and seeing, and, and with this, miracles began to happen. There was uh, there was demons being cast out. There was paralytic people being healed. There was many miracles happening. You know, as he began to speak, they began to heed to this. They began to heed to the preaching. So if you, if you read on before we get to 12, you see that as they began to heed to this, but it wasn't the miracles and all them that brought them to Christ. It was that they heeded they listened to what he had to say. Amen. You know, that's what I've said before. Miracles is not for me. I want miracles, and I'll be glad for God to heal my body. Or, but if God never heals my body, it's not going to change the way I believe. Amen. That's what we need to remember. Because I'm saved by faith in Jesus Christ. If he never does a miracle for me, you know, get me wrong, God's looked a lot of things in my life, you know, that, you know, I can only say it was... True God, you know, but I'm just saying that, he's, that even if he does nothing, I'm still going to believe that Jesus Christ is my Savior and Lord. Amen. That's the belief. That's the faith. That's what we was talking about all through Galatians. You know, when me and John was teaching Galatians, all through that we was talking about we saved by faith. And that's what it's about. I'm saved by faith. If I never see a miracle in my life, I'm still going to believe. Because of the word. The word is what brings you to Jesus Christ. Amen. And that's what brought them. And along with that came these things. To, uh, these is more like, they're more like verification and things like that, 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 these, that they are. You know, it's verifying. If you're preaching Jesus can heal, Jesus is going to heal people. Amen. You know, Jesus is going to save people. You know. And, but the word is what does it. That's what we need to, to remember. That's what they heeded to. And they began to, to get saved. And they began to, to turn their life over. You know, and they, and, and says, but when they believed, 
Philip preached the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ. They were baptized, both men and women. So what happened? The first thing that happened when they believed and they accepted Jesus Christ, they were baptized. Amen. Baptism is a command. Amen. I, baptism is not an option. I don't believe that. I don't believe baptism, whether you are baptized or not, is an option when you get saved. Do you have to have it to go to heaven? No. But I believe I would be scared if I had all the opportunities in the world to be baptized and the Lord come back. Would you make it? Now, I couldn't say I don't know. I do know the thief went, but he never had the opportunity to be baptized. That's right. But Jesus said, go into all the world, preach the gospel, baptizing them in the name of of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He's, that was a command. That's what he commanded him to do. This is what I'm telling you to do. So if you haven't been baptized, you need to be. Amen. You need to be. That's something, because that is a, it is not what saves you. You're not saved. We we'll go back to you saved by faith. But baptism is a sign that we have been regenerated. Amen. You know, as, as you look on, even on, through this right here, Simon the sorcerer, you know, he, he was there, he was baptized, but don't appear it took. It may have, and he just didn't understand it, you know, and then he might have been saved and still messed up. I, don't, I mean, I don't, I can't say I don't know, but he just, he didn't understand it because he was trying to buy the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying is, you need to be baptized. If you get saved, you need to be baptized. And I believe it's a command. I believe Amen. the way I read scripture, to me, it's it's commanded in scripture. So if you have it been, just let Brother Lee know or somebody know, and we'll be glad to, to take you under. Amen. <laughs> to, <laughs> to, <laughs> I mean, if you say you saved and you you know, we'll we'll be glad to to to, to set something up. We'll talk with you and we'll set something up and you can do it corporately. You can do it privately. However you want to do it. Amen. You know. But all I'm saying is, I believe that is a is I believe it's a, if it's possible, it's required by God. You know, there may be instances, a lot of things that you can't don't have a chance. They from the cross didn't have the chance. Jesus honored that. You know, it's just like you know, God still honored the Jews, even though when they went in captivity, even the ones that still served God. They might not could have done the sacrifices and, and the things that God wanted them to do, but God still honored them. That ain't saying because they couldn't do these things that they didn't make it. They just, if the cup where they had didn't allow them to do these things, they didn't have the temple or the altars to do it with, but they could, God still honors that, and that's what God does. He honors things, and that's what we need to know and understand. So as we... Uh, uh, talking about the Pentecost this morning, says so Peter went to preach. Now when the apostles, which were at Jerusalem, heard Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John. So when they started hearing what was going on over in Jerusalem, what did they do? They sent Peter and John. Why did they send Peter and John? Because they wanted to find out to, to make sure what was going on, to make sure they were saved, to make sure, you know, what was going on, to understand the things that was going on. So as they went, you know, they, they went. Now when the apostles, which were the Jews from hood, they sent them. You know, as it says there in 14. So they sent Peter and John. And when they went there, as it goes on into 15, it says, uh, who, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. So as when Peter and John and them went, they began to pray for them. They saw they knew what Philip was done. They saw, and for them to pray for them to, they had to see a change of some kind with them for them to pray for them to receive the Holy Ghost. So they, they knew that they were saved through what they saw. So when they would come down and pray for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. So they began to pray for them that they would receive the Holy Ghost. So as they come down, they begin to pray. And then it goes into 16. It says, It says, for as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. So that's what I'm going back to say. See, they were baptized. So Philip and them wouldn't have been baptized. They wouldn't have been baptized if they hadn't thought they were saved. 
They didn't do that. So they knew they were safe because they were baptized. So they went down to see what was going on. So then they began to pray for them to be filled with the Spirit. Then as it goes into verse 17, it says, Then laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. So he laid the hands on them. All of a sudden, they received the Holy Ghost. And then 18 tells us, as he moves into 18, I think 18 was in there, wasn't it? It says, and when Simon saw through laying on of the apostles' hands the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money. So basically, as I said about Simon, so stop with 17, but I just wanted to read 18 in the sense that Simon saw something. It doesn't say they spoke with other tongues here, but he saw something that led him to believe that something had happened. I tend to believe, like a lot of scholars, that they probably spoke with other tongues because we see it all through the gospel. We'll see it in these, these, these other instances that we look at today. But he had to see something that he wanted to, to get, get there, so he, you know, he tried to buy it. But, but what it is, is we see how it began to branch out. As it began, they, they was forced out of Jerusalem because of persecution. So just, we need to remember as Christians, sometimes when we persecute it, God has a plan. We can't look and say, oh, well, you know, God, God, what's going on here? We need to remember just to trust God. Amen. Trust God. You know, they didn't, now listen, they didn't stay there. They branched out because they were being persecuted. I mean, don't tempt God. It's just like with anything else, you know. If, you know, if they ban religion and we can't have church in the United States, we may have to go underground. You know, because what good is it us going to say, well, I'm going anyway. And we come in here and they come in and shoot us all up or take us to jail. What have we accomplished? Think about it that way. What have you accomplished? Nothing. You've accomplished nothing. But if we go underground, just like they're doing some of these other nations where they can't do church, they have underground churches, they have to do it this way, they can still get the word out. Amen. That's what it's about. So even though they left because of persecution, they still preach the word of God. We can't allow no one to stop us from preaching the word of God. Amen. So if we, in other words, these underground churches, when if people comes in on them, they call them. So they got a choice to make then. But you can rest assured, God is behind them 100%. If they come in, if somebody come in today, you know, even though it's legal, if somebody come in today threatening us, either y'all deny Jesus and go on down the road, I'm going to kill every one of you. you got a choice to make. Amen. Free will. That's it. you got a choice to make. That's right, brother. Free will. we got free will. You know, could, could that happen? Yes, it could. You know, before I could get through dollars, if I could come in that door with a gun, something for us to think about, especially with the things going on in the world. Who knows what's like to happen? You know, Come in here and say, okay, if you want to deny Jesus, head out that door right there. But anybody that stays, I'm going to kill every one of you. What would you do? I don't need you to ask me. I need you to think about that. What would you do? You don't really know what you would do. You don't. Unless it happens. Unless it happens. When it comes in, if it come in and happen. But what you've got to do is you've got to get so a hold of God in your life that you can believe that what I would do is stay here. You have to have Jesus Christ and, and that belief instilled in you so strong to know that if you deny him, you've denied the Father, and even if they kill you, you're going off into eternity. It's basically, how strong is your faith? What is your faith in? Jesus Christ. Because if they come in here, it's like, just like we was talking about in Galatians. When that time comes, it has nothing to do with how much you went to church. Amen. It has nothing to do with how much you give in tithes. It has nothing to do with how much you give in the offering. It has nothing to do with all of that. If that time comes, and you face that time in your life, what it's going to boil down to is your faith. Amen. In your faith. How strong is your faith? 
It's just like Sailor said, you may not never know unless you ever tested with that. But that's what it boils down. How strong is your faith? There are many people in the world that, that pretend, there are many people out there that pretends and whatever, but I'm telling you right now that if it comes down to that, only thing that's going to matter is your faith. Amen. You know, that's what's going to matter is your faith. You might be the strongest worker in the church and everything else, and you might head out that door. When the old guy that you talk about every week sitting on the back pew thinking, eh, he ain't nothing but a hypocrite, he may stand up and say, well, you just going to have to shoot me, brother. That's what it boils down to. Not what I think of you or anybody else. It's what God thinks of you and how strong your faith is. That's what we need to remember. And that's one thing about being filled with the Holy Ghost. That's why we need to seek for the Pentecostal experience. Because that's what helps strengthen us. That's what helps us to go. That's why they could go out. That's why even though they was run out of Jerusalem because of Paul, not Paul, but Saul. Saul was the one doing all this persecuting. He was going from house to house. After he stoned Stephen, he was going from house to house, dragging them out, putting them in jail. So that's why they, Paul was as strong as he was for Christ. He worked that hard for the devil before he got saved. That's what you need to remember. He was, to, he, you know, he was trying to destroy them all. He, he had killed them all back then. But Jesus changed his life. Amen. That's what his face was. That's why he could say at the end of his life how strong his faith was. I've kept the faith. That's what he said. I've kept the faith. You know, I've finished my course. I've done with God. Now a crown awaits for me. Amen. You know, he wasn't basing it on his life and what he'd done. He just said, this is, I've kept the faith. The faith is going to cause, as we study, it's going to cause you to do all these other things for Christ. But that's what you stand by. Is that faith you have in Jesus Christ? How strong is your faith? And the Holy Ghost being filled with it, with that overflowing experience, ain't going to do nothing but strengthen you more. Amen. So then, let me hurry on. Then we go to, to uh, another instance. This is one. This is basically when it began to branch out. And this is about, uh, as we're going to, to the Gentiles receive it. This is Cornelius' house. It says that, uh, as we go into chapter 10, like I say, this is probably two, three years later. You maybe go back before this, Peter sitting on his rooftop praying, and God lets down the, the, the uh, table or a blanket or whatever it, it is, you know, with all this unclean food that they weren't supposed to eat on it. And told Peter to rise up and eat. Peter said, like, hey, eat. this is just me paraphrasing. God says, you call us up. He said, that's all unclean. I'm not going to eat it. God says, Peter, you call the things that I prepared unclean? God done it three times. And then Peter finally got the gist of it. You know, he finally understood what God was saying to him. You don't call what I prepared for you unclean. Amen. Amen. You don't call what I've given you. If I tell you to eat it, you don't call it unclean. Amen. God says, because I don't do nothing but good. I mean, this is just me paraphrasing. God says, all things good come from me. Every good gift you have comes from me. Every, God says, I don't do nothing but good. So when he set this down, Peter's looking through the eyes of man. He's looking through the eyes of, uh, of, of, he's looking through the eyes of tradition, of where he was raised up under the Jewish ceremonial laws and things. He's looking, oh, this is unclean. And maybe, you know, there's, there's nothing wrong with a diet. There's nothing wrong. But when God sets it before you and tells you to eat of it, it's time to eat it. Amen. You know, that's the thing. That's the, the, the main thing that he's trying to show Peter. Don't say this is unclean. This is, this is me telling you that this is the way you think of these Gentiles over here, that they're unclean, that they're nothing, that, that I'm not for them. God's trying to show Peter, I'm for, I'm for them, just like I'm for you. So now you eat. And by that time, Cornelius knocks on the door. And so, because he had done been praying. So, Cornelius was a Christian. So how do you say that, brother? Because he had been praying. You said just because he was praying, I mean he's a Christian. God answered. Amen. Okay. Read it. Read it. I ain't got time to go through it, but read it. God answered his prayer. God told him to go see Peter. God don't answer a sinner's prayer unless it's a prayer of 
repentance. So, I believe he had already repented. He was just praying to God. Even, even if it was a repentance prayer, that tells me that God accepted his repentance and saved him and sent him to Peter. But either way, he was a Christian when he went and knocked on that door at Peter's house. And Peter come down, and so Peter went, as we'll see, Peter went over and says, and then Peter, when he went, he began to, to, to preach. It says, says there in verse 44, it begins, while Peter spake these words, it says, while Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all of them which heard the words. So if you go back and you read in between this, you see some of the things I'm saying, but, but it also tells you some of the things Peter began to preach. He began to preach Jesus Christ. He began to tell them, you know, all these things. And so as he was preaching all this, all of a sudden the Holy Ghost fell on it failed. How did, how did you know that? Let's read on and see. And they, and it says, and they of the circumcision, which is the Gentiles, which believed, were astonished, as many as came with Peter. So, in other words, the, the circumcision, talking about the Jews, the, the individuals that come with Peter, they was astonished because all of a sudden, here's these Gentiles speaking, doing the same thing that they was doing on the day of Pentecost, where God poured out the Spirit on them. As many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. Let's go ahead, Brother Glee. It says, For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. So they heard them speak with tongues and begin to magnify God. So when we look at that, that makes me believe that they was probably speaking a known language that they didn't know, but that Peter knew. You say, well, well, when the Spirit speaks, he can, he can do it either way. They said, unknown. According to Scripture, they say, the Spirit speaks a language that nobody knows but God. But he can also speak, and there have been instances where this has even happened with people in church in this day and age, and, and, you know, where, where someone spoke in tongues and there had been somebody out in the congregation. There was even an example in the book today uh, uh, out in the congregation that heard what they were saying and understood what they were saying, even though they didn't, because they were speaking in his dialect. So I just had a tendency to think that maybe be that for speeding them to know that they were praising and magnifying God, they kind of had to understand. But then it could have been a special thing God give them, giving them the interpretation of it. It could have been that way. Tim, I you know. know of an instance where a, a preacher took a man with him that was working with him to a church revival. He didn't want to go, but he went. And during the revival, the man, the preacher spoke in tongues. There was no interpretation given. And the man that was with him after church said to him, um, how, he said, uh, how did you know my native language? Did you spoke in my native language? And um, he said, no. He said, he said, yeah, you spoke it when you, when you stopped and you said my he started speaking in tongues, and when he didn't say speaking in tongues, he said, you spoke my language. He said, really? He said, well, what did I say? He said, you said, this is real, this is real. So that's, that's what I'm saying. It's, 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 it's sort of similar to the same thing that was in this in the commentary today uh, of something of that same interest. I said, that's the way God works. God can, can do it either way. Amen. But Amen. it's basically... As we see, what showed them was the Holy Ghost fell on them, and that was the evidence that they saw. And let's go ahead and get where we at. It says, can any man forbid? So after this, you know, Peter said, can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? So this is an instance where they received the Holy Ghost, and then they was baptized. So whether you baptize or not, does it dictate whether you get the Holy Ghost or not? And when I said that earlier about baptism is that I believe it's commanded in the Word of God. That if you're able to get it done, if you get saved, you get it done. Amen. Somebody's in the hospital bed dying and they accept Jesus Christ and they don't make it. They didn't have a chance to be baptized. But I have, I have been in the home. Well, somebody accepted Jesus Christ that was laying there sick. And they asked to be, and we couldn't take it no them, but we got some water, and we'd done the best we could. Amen. And I believe God honored it. Amen. Amen. They asked it. And, 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 and that, that just shows me they accepted him, and they, they wanted that in their life because they accepted Jesus Christ. That's, 
That's, that's all I'm saying. That, uh, you know, that I, I just believe it's. I'm not saying it's required to get you into heaven, but I am saying if you have the opportunity and you saved it, I believe it's a commandment of God that you need to get baptized. But as we go ahead, we see that Peter had, you know, that was baptized. So then, and he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tarry seven days. So then he stayed with a meeting. Let's go ahead, Brother Glenn. I'm running out. And as I began to, to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them as on us at the beginning. Then remembered I, the word of the Lord, how that he said John indeed baptized. Uh, well, back before this, let me go back just a little bit. This is going into the last part. I don't know where we were at. I got, I got lost again. But in other words, Peter goes back and they start questioning him at the Jerusalem council. So then he begins to say to them, you know, he tells them exactly what happened. And they accepted it. They said, well, okay. So that was the exception of, of the Gentiles being spread out. And now as we go into to this last part, which is up there in, in chapter 11, we see, uh, and it came to pass. <coughs> let's go to 11. Let's go back to verse 1. If we have it there, Glenn. Acts 11 and 1. It's not in there. It says, and it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came into Ephesus and finding certain disciples. He said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether they be any Holy Ghost. So in other words, Paul's on another missionary journey. This is his third missionary journey as he's, as he's moving, which is, like I say, this is probably about 20, 45 years after this. You know, this is Paul's third missionary journey. He's went a different way and he's coming through here and he runs into Apollos there at Corinth. And he sees that they, he know, in other words, he's noticed that they're they speaking, uh, they they knowledgeable in a sense of salvation, but not to the, the, the total Extent. That's why he starts questioning them. Paul, having passed through the upper coast, he says, he said to them, had you received the Holy Ghost? So they are already speaking, John's speaking, that about being redeemed, about being saved. They had been baptized by John. And so as he's speaking to them, you know, he's finding certain disciples. He said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? And they said unto him, we have not so much as heard. So they said they hadn't, they hadn't even really hadn't heard of it. So whether they... You know, maybe they had heard in a sense. They said they hadn't heard of it because they didn't know, but it's probably with everything going on. But whether they had or not, you know, it's we don't know because we don't know everything that Paul said to them then. We just know that Paul began to minister to them. And that's what he did on this missionary journey. He began to, to minister to them. He began to, to teach them, to educate them more. I mean, that's basically... They was already they were disciples of John, so they was already the disciples of Jesus. They was probably already saved, but they probably didn't understand everything they needed to understand. That's why Paul began to question them. Paul began to talk to them. And they said unto him, We have not so much as even heard that would be a Holy Ghost. So so Paul says, Well, I need to I need to work with these people. They're going out doing this, but they don't have the equipment they need. That's what's so important about discipleship. We just don't save somebody and send them out and they don't know what's going on. That's why study to show thyself approved. How do you show yourself approved? Amen. Amen. Study to show thyself approved. How are you going to show yourself approved? You study the Word of God. You get into the Word of God. You go to church. You listen to, a, to pastors, to true pastors preaching the Word of God. And if you've been studying, you know they're preaching the Word of God. You feel the Spirit leading and guiding you. There's many ways that you show yourself approved. But the main thing you show yourself approved is, is when you go out there with your testimony. And you start telling people about Jesus Christ. You start telling the, the world about Jesus Christ to show thyself approved. So he began to teach them. And then as we go into verse 3, it says, And he said unto them, it says, And he said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized? So they was already baptized, and they said unto him, John's baptism. So in other words, they're going back to what John, you know, and John preached Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. Repent. John preached repentance. He preached repentance. 
So they, they understood that part, but they didn't understand the rest. And then said Paul, John barely baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should be that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. So they believed on Jesus Christ. And they believed just through what John said. That shows you the power of John's ministry. This is like 25 years later, and they still believing on Jesus Christ. You know, and when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. So when they heard this, this is the only instance of rebaptism that we, we see in the, the New Testament, in, in the New Testament or Bible. But there's nothing wrong if you want to be baptized again. There's nothing wrong with that. Don't get me, you know. But the... I go back to what I said to start with. If you say you need to to be baptized, if you have the opportunity, Amen. you know. So, and, but says so, so. So they they were baptized in the name of so Paul baptized them. So that tells you Paul. We don't know what all Paul talked to him about, but I just saying what I you know my opinion is that Paul began to tell them about Jesus, about how he came, how he was crucified, how he died on the cross for our sins, uh, how through faith in Jesus Christ that they already had just through, through the baptism of John. He probably began to tell them all about this and probably told them about the Pentecostal experience, how Jesus ascended into heaven, how, you know, that they arose you know, about the resurrection, how he ascended into heaven, how the Pentecostal you know, the Holy Ghost fell on the day of Pentecost, and it was all filled with the Spirit. It says, and then after that, it says, and when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. So here's the answers again, 25 later, years later. They're doing the same thing. He's laying hands on them, and they are speaking with tongues. And they are prophesying. Prophesying is either foretelling or foretelling. You know, that's when you talk about prophecy, that's what it is. It's not a prophecy is not a new revelation. It's a, God can 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 give Brother Lee a prophecy, you know, or, or anyone a prophecy. If you feel with the Holy Holy Ghost, he can give you a prophecy of something that may be going to happen in the future, but he's not going to give you anything that's going to be contrary to the word of God. Amen. He's not going to give you anything that's going to change the word of God. Amen. God don't give me revelations about his word. I, I can't emphasize that enough because that's what I see so much going on out in the world today. People having a new revelation about his word. No, he does not give new revelations about it. His word is completed and it's finished. Amen. Don't add to it. Don't take away. Amen. But he does. He can still foretell, you know. Amen. Well, he can stand up here one day and say, I was praying and all of a sudden God moved on me out here through the Holy Spirit and he said that, we got three weeks and we need to get ready. Something's coming. That don't mean to rapture or anything else. I'm just saying that that could happen. That's something right there that God's letting us know as a church that we need to get ready because something's coming. God can do that. That's, that's what we call foretelling. Amen. Fourth telling is basically preaching the word of God. Amen. Putting it out there. Prophesy. So they begin to prophesy. They begin to preach. They begin to, to, to teach the word of You know, as they was doing, they begin to prophesy. And all the men were about 12. So there was 12 men there. We don't know, you know, as the Bible normally does, it'll say 12 men. They could have been, they could have been 200 people there, the rest of them women. But they would just say 12 men. You know, that's the way the Bible, we don't know. I, I would imagine there was probably some ladies there, you know. Some of these men might have been married or whatever, but but in any case, it's for everybody. Amen. You know, the prophecy was for your sons and daughters. Your sons and daughters would, would, would prophesy. Your sons and daughters, you know, all of us. But the, the most important thing is it's still happening today. You can still be filled with the Holy Spirit today. You still should be seeking for the infilling of the Holy Ghost today because it's going to strengthen you. It's going to help you, especially in times that we're living in now. We don't know what's going to mean. Just look back at this year, everything that's happened up until now. You know, you sit back, well, what's going to be next? You know, who thought we would be writing in Columbia yesterday? Who knows what's coming? 
We don't know what's coming. That's what we have to remember. So as I close this morning, I just want you to know that it is open today. God ain't changed. Amen. I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. So don't let nobody tell you that that was for them. Amen. We need it as much or more than they do today. We got more people dying for Christ in the world today than, than they did back then. People dying for Jesus Christ. Amen. You know. And as I said earlier, you don't know if somebody comes through that door. I mean, they burned a church down here just a few couple weeks ago. What if come come in and what if somebody bar that door while we're in here? And set the place on fire. Are you ready? Could God put it out? Yes. But I'm just saying, are you ready? That's, for, that's thought for every one of us. You know, be prepared. And one of the best things you can do if you don't have the Holy Ghost is seek for it. It's still there. It's still waiting to, to, to fill you with an overabundance. I'm not saying you ain't a, you, you're a Christian because you believe on faith. But I think if you have the opportunity, you, you need to seek for that feeling which is going to help you in your life in every part of your life. And I just want to thank you all this morning.